The mass and the volume flow rate. We'll try to understand what is mass and what is the volume flow rate. So, and we'll try to get the mathematical expressions for these two terms. If we um, consider this figure here, you can see this is just the control surface. We took very small part and the differential cross-sectional area is DAC. This is the, is it the velocity V it is acting and this is the you know the normal component of the velocity v m right so what do we know the definition of the mass flow rate this is amount of the mass which is fall you know flowing through a cross sections so let's say this is the cross sectional area dac for per unit time so the flow that a fluid that flows through inside this cross section cross section so it is going out or it's coming in it could be two cases okay so the flow the fluid flows into or out of a control value it usually usually defines and when we're talking about the differential mass flow rate so this is we took a very small section differential section so we said the differential mass flow rate it will be proportional so differential mass flow rate we can say it is you know um, delta m so we can say this delta m the differential mass flow rate it will be proportional to the area itself dic the density of the fluid like what types of fluid you have the density of this and this normal velocity component here v n this is actually the normal velocity component okay this is the normal velocity component actually this will always um, acts like the perpendicular ways right so we have got this is the differential mass flow rate when you're talking about this very small differential sections now if we want to get the mass flow rate for the whole domain then what we need to do we need to integrate so if we integrate this here if we integrate this, so integration differentiation will cancel out each other, we will get the mass flow rate. And it will be the term. So if you closely look guys here, rho, it is actually the density. Vn, this is the velocity, normal velocity component, right? This is the velocity component. And dac, this is the cross-sectional area for this section. Now you see, this one, the area differential area it's not going to change it's constant differential area but the density and the velocity it varies throughout the cross section of the pipe at the domain the flow domain so that actually varies so we cannot say they are uniform but we can assume that okay the density changes it's not a lot and it is essentially uniform to you know over the cross section okay so we said the density is uniform over the five cross section and we can take it is um, as a constant if it is uniform so we can take this let's say this is the integration so we can take this density just out of the domain okay now we have the vn and dac when we'll do the integrations um this you see this integration sign this differential sign it will it can cancel out so we can for the whole domain you can say it is rho ac and then integration of vn so now if i show you here I write down the final term of the mass flow rate is rho ac and vn it was kind of m equal um, it was the density the cross sectional area and it is vn so in a state of this vn you see we write down here the velocity average velocity look velocity is also changing throughout the domain if we see this cross-sectional view and this is schematic here initially let's say it was the starting of the flow where all the this is the fluid particles so this 
is the arrow it's telling all the directions and the magnitude you see initially i said wall are same so same magnitude when fluid rest now when it start moving you see this is the pipe wall it is not moving is it it is rigid so no slip condition here no slip means it is zero velocity at this wall so due to this no slip conditions the fluid particles near the wall it will obtain a less velocity compared to the other particles and you you know the fully developed flow conditions so i'm not going to explain it a lot because it will increase the length of the video so what is happening here you see the flow is developing due to the no slip conditions here actually we can see the at the center line the velocity it is maximum it will make a profile like this i'll discuss it in details during the lecture so the flow becomes a fully developed flow so fully developed means the flow velocity will be maximum at the center and it will you know so that means the flow if we actually want to consider the whole domain of the pipe then what is said the velocity at the center is maximum so what is did we just took the average velocity because we actually want to consider the whole system so we cannot take this velocity or this velocity but we need the average velocity of all of this so we took okay this dotted line and that let's say this is the average velocity so instead of this we said okay the mass flow rate is the density the average velocity and the cross-sectional area so that gives us the expression for the mass flow rate right we'll develop it a bit more later on but now the volume flow rate and we can define the mass average velocity is like this the volume flow rate we know the volume flow rate is the volume of the fluid flowing through a cross section per unit time so this is the cross section and this is the you know the normal component of the velocity now if we integrate it so this will get this is the average velocity and this integration this differentiation will cancel out it will be ac so the volume flow rate we can say vac now <coughs> when we know the volume flow rate is vac if we substitute this vac this is equal you see the volume flow rate so that means we can write that mass flow rate it is equal the density into the volume flow rate or we can write it as volume flow rate over this small v this small v it is actually the specific volume specific volume we know rho equal on over small v so that's the specific volume so this couple of expression we have got we can we know mass flow rate equal this we can write mass flow rate equal this and we know the volume flow rate equal this so we'll have a little discussions um, during the lecture on this topic and I will discuss how the boundary layer form here and how this concept actually how the flow becomes fully developed yeah and I will also explain this so that's it um, here I'm repeating again we're going to use all these formulas when we will solve the problems